Oh boy, this is a tough one. Sony has released the fantastic FX30, which is an APS-C sensor camera, but is stacked with video features. And some people are asking me in my comments section, what about the glorious a7 IV that you are looking at right now, filming my pretty face? What about the a7 IV? Maybe you should save up that extra $700 and get this full frame beast. I don't know, so uh, let's talk about it. Now the thing is, I use a lot of Sony cameras. This is the a7 III that I have in my hand. a7 IV you're looking at right now, and over here is my little Dougie, my little ZV-E10. And I have pre-ordered the FX30 because I cannot have enough Sony cameras. Apparently, I have purposes for them. You don't know me, but in this video, if you're trying to choose one of the cameras, if you're not a crazy person like me that is just remortgaging his house to buy more and more cameras, and you want to choose between the a7 IV and the FX30, well, uh, let's talk about why you might choose one over the other. Now, let me tell you something. These cameras have a lot in common. Number one is the value. They are both fantastic values, in my opinion, which is exactly why I am buying both. Well, I already bought this one, but I am going to buy the other one. And uh, you know, they both do 4K uh, at 10-bit, 422 up to 60. And in fact, one of them goes to 120. We'll talk about that in a second, but they go 422. 10-bit, love it. They all, they both have S Cinetone. They both have lens uh, breathing compensation, which I absolutely love. They both have that cool new focus mapping, which some people say they don't use. I use it all the time. I think it's a very good way to uh, judge your focus. Unlimited record times, weather ceiling. You can't go wrong with either camera, in my opinion. But each has advantages over the other. So let's get into that right now. So let's talk about the strengths of the a7 IV first. And first of all, it has a 33 megapixel sensor versus a 26 megapixel sensor. But more importantly than that, in my opinion, is that it is a full frame sensor versus an APS-C size sensor, a much larger sensor. And coming with that in the Sony system is a better dynamic range. It's probably gonna have a full stop better of dynamic range according to all of the tests that are out there. So you have better dynamic range in between the shadows and the highlights and it will also be better in low light that larger sensor is going to be better in low light than the smaller APS-C sensor on the FX30. It has a 3.6 million dot EVF you know the electronic viewfinder the thing that photographers like to look through and sometimes videographers myself included like to look through it is very helpful for photos and also can be helpful for video. The FX30 has no viewfinder, so it is a very streamlined camera that I'm sure helps keep costs down as well. And a lot of people are gonna be using that camera as strictly a video camera, so uh, they don't mind losing the electronic viewfinder. But for your hybrid shooters, for people who want to take photos, having a 3.69 million dot EVF is a huge advantage. 10 frames per second shooting in mechanical shutter because it has a mechanical shutter, the a7 IV. The FX30 does not have a mechanical shutter. So uh, that is a huge bummer if you wanna take a lot of photos because if you're having trouble with rolling shutter, let's say race cars are going past, the Tour de France is happening right in front of your eyes. And if the bikers are slanted in electronic shutter, switch it over to mechanical and they'll probably be straightened right up there. So you don't have to worry about rolling shutter issues when you're using mechanical shutter. So uh, that is a huge point for the a7 IV having a mechanical shutter. And that full frame sensor will give you better subject separation at the same aperture compared to an APS-C. So if you had a 51.2 on the uh, a7 IV, it's gonna have a blurrier background than a 1.2 on the APS-C camera. And the Sony does have a 50 millimeter 1.2 and you won't be able to get an autofocus lens with the equivalent of a 1.2 background blur when it comes to an APS-C camera. So for those of you who wanna get the most amount of blurry bokeh with autofocus, then uh, the a7 IV is going to be the way to go. Now, the last one to me is actually a huge deal, and that is the ability to shoot in APS-C mode, ironically, on the a7 IV. So right now, I'm shooting on 24 millimeter G Master uh, f1.4, but I can get the same field of view as a basically 36 millimeter lens if I put it in APS-C crop mode, and I do do that, I do do that all 
the time. So uh, I really love the idea of being able to go from uh, full frame into an APS-C crop on the same lens. I have done it so many times. I am constantly, there's a crop in 4K at 4K 60, but you can use the APS-C crop mode in all of the other modes if you want to never change lenses. And when you go into slow motion into 60, frames per second in 4K, then you could have used the APS-C crop mode in say 4K 24, and it keeps it all the same. So that 60 crop mode doesn't have to be necessarily a bad thing if you're shooting in crop mode on the other modes, you know? Now let's move on to the FX30. Now one of the big standout features to me is the 16-bit raw output over HDMI. I've always wanted that in a camera, but I have not wanted to shell out that type of money for one of the cinema cameras, the FX3 or even the A7S3. So now that there's one for $1,800, I am uh, grabbing it up. So speaking of something that I have always wanted is the uh, slow motion. 4K 120 in an $1,800 camera, and it is 4K with great autofocus. Now it does come, unfortunately, with a 1.6 times crop. They do a one-to-one -one pixel readout, so that way you're still going to get really sharp footage and you're not gonna get terrible rolling shutter, uh, and they crop way in on the sensor, but that is what they had to do, and I am okay with that. I will say, like I said, what about the APS-C mode, which I love from the a7 IV, I do wish they would let you do a one-to-one -one ratio for all of the modes, 4K 24, 30, 60, you know what I mean? And that way, if you wanted to switch into 4K 120 on the same lens without changing your field of view, you would always be able to do that because you're starting out in the crop mode. You know, like, I just wish they had that option because one of the compelling reasons for me to get a full frame camera from Sony is the APS-C crop mode that you can go into. And since they already clearly can do it with the 4K 120 at a one-to-one -one readout, just do it with the other modes. Give me the option, come on. You have the ability to load custom LUTs, which is fantastic for me because I like using the Leaming LUT for a lot of my footage and uh, I haven't been able to load on a lot to any of my Sony cameras. I can put it on a monitor, but not on the camera itself. So that is a great help to me and I appreciate it. It has the Cine EI menu. So there's a lot of people who uh, really prefer that menu when it comes to the Sony cinema line. And now that is in this little mini cinema camera. And speaking of also things that the other cinema cameras have, it has dual base ISO. So you have a dual base ISO of uh, 800 and 2500, and that is official. Now, a lot of people say that the a7 IV has an unofficial dual base ISO of uh, 800 in S-Log3, I'm talking about, 800 and uh, 3200. And I suppose that may be true, but it's certainly not something that Sony says, whereas the FX 30 has an official dual base ISO. The FX30 has an active cooling system and as some people have experienced the A7 IV, it can overheat, especially if you're fooling around with the menus, even with the internal temperature set on high, the camera gets quite hot when you're scrolling through the menus and a lot of people don't really trust this camera in high heat conditions. Now with that fan on the FX30, that is gonna be rock solid and I am sure you're never going to have any worries of overheating issues on the FX30. And the FX30 has no crop in 4K60. Well, no extra crop in 4K60. So if you're shooting 4K24 on the uh, FX30 and then you wanna switch it into 4K60 to get a little bit of dreamy slow motion, get that bride walking down with her hair blowing just right in the wind, just to prove how much better she is than all of her friends, then you can just switch into that mode without going into the crop. You'll only go into that crop for the 4K 120, so it is good that you can go at least up to 4K 60 without changing the field of view. You can get timecode in with a timecode adapter cable on the FX30, and that is essential for a lot of productions. They need timecode in going into their camera, which is one of the reasons that this thing belongs in the cinema line. And with the body design, it has that optional handle accessory for the XLR that you can use, and it has all of those quarter threads that go around the camera, which make it easier to mount devices 
onto that camera so you don't have to necessarily rig it up huge with a cage that you would have to do with the a7 IV. Great to have all of those mounting points. And the button layout of the body is also much more video friendly if you are a video shooter and chances are if you're watching this video you do want to shoot a lot of video and uh, the FX30 you know it caters to video. It has two CF Express slots which can also fit standard SD cards and that is great. On the A7 IV you only have one CF Express card and then the other card uh, slot has to be for the SD. So it's nice that it is uniform on the FX30 and that you'll be able to write you know the highest frame rates at the highest codecs onto both cards at once without having to do any proxies or anything like that. So now which one would you choose? Well to me the a7 IV is my favorite all around camera period. I use it for everything, for video, for photos, I take portraits, I take landscapes, I take 10 bit footage, I do documentaries, I do it all with the a7 IV. It is why I bought this camera. To me it is the absolute best hybrid camera, real hybrid camera that you can buy for the money. The autofocus amazing features amazing. However, if you are going to be 90% video, let's say, because the FX30, to be fair, it will be able to take great photos in limited circumstances and that it doesn't have mechanical shutter and you have no EVF, but it is 26 megapixels and it is a great sensor. So you can take photos with it, but let's just say it is definitely more a video camera. And for the price, the video specs are off the charts. It is such an excellent value video camera. If you're a total video guy, don't plan to take photos, bang for your buck, the FX30 is going to be the way to go. So tell me in the comments below what you think. Would you rather have an a7 IV or an FX30? Do you have one? Are you gonna get the other? Just let's have a little discussion down there. I find that a lot of people benefit from the discussion in the comments section. There's a lot of people throwing out opinions and uh, they make you think. So anyway, thanks for watching this. We'll talk to you again soon. Okay, bye-bye.